Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. So this week we are actually working on a kind of fun piece for me and that is because I recently found out I'm going to be an aunt again. And so my sister is having a baby and for her first baby we did a dresser for um, the nursery that was is also her changing table. And we're going to be doing the same thing. Uh, I know already that it's a little girl and um and my my sister has chosen the colors for her nursery in shades of purples and so we're going to be doing some purples um i kind of get to have a little bit of freedom she did show me what shades she liked but other than that i get to kind of run with it so i think this is going to be really pretty i want to keep it elegant and something that she can grow up with um, but we're going to put together a really pretty blended finish on this piece um, I think you guys are going to like this transformation in shades of purple. So stick around and let's get started. Here's where we started on this piece. I had this one in my inventory for quite a while and nobody had picked it up. And my sister liked this one. It's very similar to what my other niece had as far as the curvaceous front and then it being a low dresser so she can also use it as a changing table. I gave it a good cleaning and removed all the hardware. And next I'm gonna sand down this top because I do wanna do a wood stain finish. So I'm using my Surf Prep sander, um, an 80, a 120, and then a 220 grit paper to take this back to raw wood. I did seal up the body of my piece in coats of shellac and that's because I know this is gonna be a bleeder and I wanna go ahead and protect that. Next I'm gonna go ahead and wipe on my raised stencil. I'm using the Jamila Vine stencil. This is from Royal Design Studios. It's probably one of my favorite stencils. It's definitely one of my most used. I love the design. It's nice and pretty and elegant. It also takes a raised pattern really well. I'm actually just using a joint compound and I'm wiping it on using a plastic spatula and then I'm going to even out using a bowl scraper. So this is a large bowl scraper. It's actually a kitchen tool, but it works really well for raised stenciling because it's nice and wide and it gets me a very even level raised stencil. I scrape this over top using kind of a 45 degree angle. I'm careful not to remove my mud as I'm scraping over top of it. I just want to even it out but not be taking it back off again. This is where the magic happens when you actually get to pull your stencil away and reveal the raised pattern. Next, I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side of my furniture piece, same thing, scraping over it with a plastic scraper um, and then following up with my bowl scraper to get as even as possible. Once I've got my pattern as even as possible, I can go ahead and reveal my design on the sides. The sides are complete. Now I'm gonna move on to the front, which is my drawers. I went ahead and took out my drawers from the body and I lined them up. I did use a clamp to hold the drawers in place so they stayed aligned with each other. I'm just using the bottom three drawers um, on each side, the right and the left side of the piece. I decided not to do all 12. I didn't want this to just be this one pattern. I do wanna add some other accent details. The front was a little bit harder. I did end up deciding to use a little bit of spray adhesive on the back of my stencil to hold it in place because they have this curvature. The sides were definitely easier because they were a perfectly flat surface. So the front took me a little bit longer. The other thing I changed moving to the front is I decided to lay my stencil out in a horizontal pattern versus the vertical that I used on the sides. And that's just because it fit better. So the sides had more of a vertical layout. Uh, when it came to the front, the horizontal worked much better. So with both sides of my piece done, and then the right and the left side of the front, I'm done with my raised stencil. It was a total of four placements on this piece, and here's where I landed. So if you guys remember from the intro, these are the colors that my sister chose for her nursery, and so we're gonna be using this for our color inspiration. I'm gonna pull the shades of purple that I'm gonna be using from these draperies. 
The first thing I need to do to get my stencil ready to accept paint is I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down using my surf prep sander. I'm just using a fine grit paper. I believe I had a 120 grit on at this point and going over lightly over the top of it, just to remove any loose bits and really uneven spots. Next, I'm gonna give my piece another coat of shellac. This is gonna seal my mud so it doesn't reactivate when I brush paint over top. I usually like to complete my stained surfaces before I start my paint, and so I'm gonna go ahead and work on the stained surface of this top. I'm gonna to use a pre-stained conditioner. This is a pre-stained conditioner from Minwax. It's an oil-based formula because I intend to use an oil-based wax. I brush on a coat onto my raw wood, and then I'm gonna wipe away any excess and let this absorb into the wood. This is gonna help my stain accept more evenly. Let's get a first coat onto this piece. So for my three colors that I'm gonna be blending together, I used Wiseau Black Cherry, and then I mixed a shade with a little bit of Antique Villa, which is a white, and a shade with a little bit of black. And that gave me three shades of the same color, which made for really nice blending. The closer together your colors are, the easier they're gonna to be to blend. Now, Black Cherry is kind of a fun color because when it first goes on, it looks a little alarming. It's this bright color. But when you get a couple layers of it on, it's gonna deepen into this nice, rich purple. I'm applying this using my Klingon brushes. I did use a brush for each color. I'm gonna brush my darkest shade around the outer edge, edges. My pure black cherry is in the middle, and then my lighter shade that's mixed with a little bit of white is in the center. This is just my first coat of paint, so it doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a base coat. I just wanna get my colors roughly laid out, decide my layout, and then from here on my second coat is when I'm actually gonna be perfecting these blends. While my base coat is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my coat of stain to the top. I did decide to use a gel stain, and I chose a gel stain because I wanna give a nice, rich, deep color to this, and also from memory, it's what I used on my niece's dresser as well. This gel stain is from General Finishes, and I did end up applying two coats of it, um, letting it dry in between coats. So now I've got my stain top. Here's my body, it's ready for a second coat. It's not perfect, but it's a great base. I am going to put a second coat on this side here and I'm gonna walk through this blend pretty slowly with you guys so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. So right now I just have one blended coat on here and what I actually did is I took my main body color which is Wiseau Black Cherry and I mixed one with a little bit of black and I mixed one with a little bit of Antique Villa. So I've got three shades that are actually the same color. So I'm gonna start off in the center here and I'm just gonna make a sort of highlight area that's gonna be done in my black cherry mixed with antique villa, which is a shade of white. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of water just to help my brush glide on the surface because it's got that existing paint on there. The paint has a little bit of tooth to it because it's got that dry chalky finish. All right, and I'm gonna brush it out onto the edges nice and far and I'm gonna let my brush get pretty empty where the edges are really just a thinned out layer. I want the center to be nice and saturated, but I'm gonna fade this out as I get out to those edges. And then I'm just gonna brush through the center again. Got a brush hair. Okay, I'm using my Klingon S50 brushes. I have one brush for each color. This is my main body color, which is Wiseau Black Cherry. And I'm gonna brush this around the outside of this circle that I made. I'm not going to quite go to the edges because for that I'm going to use my uh, color that's mixed with the black. But I'm going to get pretty close and I'm making sure that I get full coverage because I do have a raised stencil on here so I want to get into all of these details. And same thing, I'm going to brush this out a little bit further than I wanted with just a nice thin coat around those edges. And then I'm going to come into the center here. Need to get a little more paint on my brush and I'm going to complete this full loop. Okay. 
It is easiest to blend when your colors are close in shade. Now, because these are three tones of the same color, I can blend them really easily together. Okay, and now I'm gonna come back with my brush for my lightest color. And I'm gonna start working that in. This brush is pretty dry because I had very little paint on there and then I worked it all out onto the edges. So right now I'm just using it to blur out this line. And just that step does a pretty good job, but I'm gonna go even one step further after this. Already that looks much better. I'm gonna take a dry clean brush and this is the Wiseau Premium brush, they're one and a half inch. And I'm gonna lightly swirl this and I'm gonna work my way in sort of a spiral, starting on that line between those two colors and I'm gonna pull them inward And as I get inward, I'm going to be to my lightest color in the center. Make sure I get all the way around. All right, and I just did these two colors together, but now I'm going to come and do the same thing with my outer ring. And this time I'm going to take my color that has a little bit of black mixed into it. I'm going to wet my surface and I'm going to give myself a little bit of that. I'm using the water um, also to help my paint find all those low points in my raised stencil. So if you didn't have a raised stencil, you probably would use less water if this was just a flat surface. But I'm also trying to make the paint nice and loose to brush into that stencil. All right, and once I've got that on, I'm gonna come back with my brush for my pure black cherry, which is what I've got in the middle. And I'm going to brush it right into that blackened color. A little bit more water over here because my black cherry has started to set up and I want it to stay in play for a little bit longer. And I'm not paying attention to that inner circle right now. If I felt like I needed to correct it, I could. I'm going to lay this brush off onto a rag and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to swirl these colors together. I'm using a very, very, very light hand when I do this. Almost like a feather duster. My paint is a little bit sticky at this point, which helps me pull those colors together. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And then down here at the bottom, and actually probably in the corners, I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of black. just to give some drama to those very corners. All right, so my few tips are, uh, use a different brush for each color. That dry, clean brush at the end is your blending brush. Um, a soft bristle synthetic brush works nicely. A little bit of water, um, using shades that are close together in tone. Uh, really helps and then uh, not too much water because you don't want to make a big soupy mess Swirling those colors together. It's going to dry really nicely. This is a self-leveling paint So it looks nice and smooth. Uh, this is going to be ready for clear coat With two coats on I really love these colors together. It's so rich you guys So I did decide I wanted to add some other accents I'm going to be using this uh, roses and rouge transfer from redesign with Prima the colors in it were right It's the watercolor flowers that are on the draperies. I think this is just going to be just the right touch I'm just going to apply, apply a simple flower into the corner of each side of the top drawer I cut out my flower from the body of my transfer and then I'm rubbing it on using the transfer tool that comes in the package with the transfer. Once I rub over the entirety, I pull back the clear backing sheet and then I'm going to rub over top of the transfer just using my fingers. I did decide to piece in some other pieces along with this single flower, some other leaves and smaller flowers, so I just can add those in over top. 
I love transfers like this that are buildable designs that I can lay out in any pattern that I want that suits my piece. Once it's all laid out, I burnish over the top of it just using a dry rag. And once this is done, this, this transfer will be ready to seal. On the drawer fronts, I did decide to add this hardware accent. And this is a silk screen stencil from Redesign with Prima. Um, this is an older design. I don't believe it's available anymore, but it's a beautiful accent for my hardware. And then I'm rubbing over it using a little bit of patina paste from Posh Chalk. This patina paste is really beautiful. This was my first time using it, but it's a gorgeous color. It's this antique gold. I'm just applying it with my finger. This is an oil-based formula. So this would be an option for a gilding wax. When I pull back the stencil, you can see the design. Once I put my hardware in the middle, those are gonna act as hardware medallions. Next, the body is going to be sprayed in clear coat. I usually do four coats over the top and then two over the body. And this is being sprayed using a Husky gun attached to a DeWalt compressor. I'm also just spraying a Wysol varnish. Here is my piece once it's complete with the raised stenciling, the blend over the top. It's got the hardware medallions and then those transfers on the side. I love how this piece came out, you guys. I staged this one pretty simply because this piece is just really elegant. So I used this bold gold mirror that usually hangs in my dining room and then a bouquet of flowers that tied in with the colors from my dresser. Um, I did have to do some mirror edits for this one, which I hate doing. They're time consuming, but I love how they look in staging. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, you can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com.